Hello friends, it's another Tuesday and I welcome you to the Mental Catalyst. I am Michael Amankwa. The Mental Catalyst or TMC is a show that seeks to empower everyone to achieve their purpose and full potential on earth. Once again, welcome to the Mental Catalyst. Last week's episode was, epi- was season three, episode one, titled, I am sorry. And basically it was about apologies, you know, um, the relevance and importance of you know apologizing to people, how one can apologize and apologize effectively, and uh, we talked about the different types of apologies and some of some of the the reasons or importance of uh, you know apologizing. I think the one that stuck out more, or the one that I got a lot of feedback on, was basically about uh, apologizing you know in situations when you are not at fault, and you do that primarily because you value the relationship. And you are setting your ego apart and you know just apologizing because you want a relationship to you know endure and then also um survive so i found that very interesting because sometimes when i do apologize in situations where i i know it's clearly not my fault i've also realized that sometimes people think that genuinely you're at fault and that's what you're apologizing for so i think that when we educate ourselves and we let people know that okay look even though i apologize it does not necessarily mean that i'm at fault but just because i value the relationship uh, we need to see or find we need to see how we manage that situations because if you're apologizing because you value a relationship and the other person is taking it you know in another way which obviously does not lend uh, credibility or help the you know the relationship then something is amiss so i got a lot of feedback on on that one and uh, i'm glad that um, people learned a lot from that as well so today is um, season three episode two we are going uh, we've come a long way from January to now. And today is entitled, I love you inconsistently. I love you inconsistently. Uh, that's an interesting title as well. But as I always do, I'm going to start with, you know, three short stories. And uh, from there we, we continue. So the first one, it's about a married couple. Let's call them Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And they have a young son, okay, who is barely, you know, 10 years old, okay? So one evening, Mr. Smith comes back from work. Whilst Ms. Mrs. Smith was at a you know, dinner table, preparing dinner and uh, you know, setting the table and stuff like that, Mr. Smith went to her at the table and held her hand and said, I want a divorce. I want a divorce. Mrs. Smith was shocked. She wasn't expecting it. And as she laid down the chopsticks and the things she was trying to use in setting the table, she asked Mr. Smith, why do you want a divorce? Mr. Smith looked at her and said nothing. She asked again, why do you want a divorce? Mr. Smith said nothing. At that point, Mrs. Smith said, you're not a man. You're a coward. You're not a man. That night, they didn't have dinner. And they didn't speak. In the morning, Mr. Smith decided to draft a divorce agreement, which stated that Mrs. Smith could take their house, could also take their car, and also 30% in the company that they owned together. So she was going to be entitled to 30% of the company. So she he left the agreement with Mrs. Smith, and left for the day. So on his return that evening, he came back very late that evening, and he saw Mrs. Smith also drafting a response. So, was drafting a response. So, that evening, they didn't speak, but in the morning, before he left for work, Mrs. Smith went to Mr. Smith and said, I have one condition. First of all, the first thing she did was she tore Mr. Smith's divorce agreement and she said, I'm not interested in the house, I'm not interested in the car, and I'm not interested in the shares in the business. But I have one favor to ask of you, Mr. Smith, my husband. For the next 30 days, I want you to carry me from the bedroom 
to the entrance of her house for just 30 days. That's one month. Carry me the same way you carried me on our wedding night. You carried me to our bedroom. I want you to carry me for the next 30 days. And after that, I will grant you your wish. And her reason to Mr. Smith was that their son was about having an exam that coming month. And she didn't want him to be disturbed, knowing that the parents were about divorcing. Excuse me. So Mr. Smith, who at that point had sympathy and pity towards the wife, given that the wife had given 10 years of her life, he felt sorry for her. And he thought that the only thing he could do was to agree to it. So that morning, Mr. Smith carried Mrs. Smith. And it was awkward because they had not been in that physical contact for a while. And it was clumsy. But he carried the wife, Mrs. Smith, to the front door. The second day, he did the same thing. But whilst he was doing it on the second day, their son was rooting and saying, Yay, that is carrying mommy, that is carrying mommy. And he was all excited and happy about it. The days went by, so the third, the fourth, and the fifth day, the same routine. But as Mr. Smith was carrying Mrs. Smith every morning to the door, he began to realize how Mrs. Smith has started aging with all the gray and all the wrinkles. But most importantly, he has also, he has also started admiring her natural beauty. At the same time, he was beginning to start feeling an intimate feeling for the wife. The same feeling that he used to feel when they were dating and when they got married. Because he started what? Carrying the wife from the bedroom to the entrance on a daily basis. Okay? So he kept on doing that. He kept on doing that. Mrs. Smith also asked of Mr. Smith that she promised him that he would not tell their son that they were getting divorced, for which he had agreed. But Mr. Smith before all of this, was in another relationship with a lady called Jane. So he had left his matrimonial home, and his heart was with another woman out of home. But as the days went by, and he was carrying the wife, and he was beginning to feel the things that he used to feel through the, the contact and the way he looked and you know, at the wife, he realized that he still loved his wife, and started having second thoughts. So as the days went by, towards the end of the month, on the last day, when Mr. Smith carried, I think the day before the last day, when Mr. Smith carried Mrs. Smith, he realized how few and thin she had become. At that point, he realized that there was only one thing that he had to do. So after he had taken Mr. S Mrs. Smith to the door and he left for work, he went straight to James, that was the mistress, and said to Jane, I am sorry, I cannot divorce my wife anymore. I want to stay married to my wife. Therefore, I am not interested in being with you anymore. On his way back, Mr. Smith goes to the flower shop, buys a beautiful set of roses, Whilst buying it, the sales girl asked, do you need a card to go with it? Mr. Smith said, yes, I need a card to go with it. The sales girl asked, what card, what words do you want to write in the card? And Mr. Smith smiled and said, I will carry you every morning to death do a spot. With a card in hand and the flowers in hand, Mr. Smith comes home, all excited, looking forward to the new life that he had envisaged. Feeling proud that he had given up on a relationship that wasn't worth whatever he thought it was. Ready to make up to his wife. He got home and realized that whilst he was away, whilst Mrs. Smith was sleeping, she died in her sleep. But apparently, Mrs. Smith, a couple of months back, had cancer which had advanced, which Mr. Smith did not know. Mrs. Smith did what she did because she didn't want her son 
the step one because of the exams. But most importantly, she didn't want the son hating the father of how he treated her in her last days. I love you inconsistently. Mr. Smith, after turning a new leaf, repenting, gets home and it was done. I don't know how you feel or what you think, but I don't think any of us wants to be in the shoes of Mr. Smith. The second story, it's a shorter one, which is about a Chinese bamboo. And the bamboo, the normal bamboo trees that we, we, you know, we know. But this is a different type of grass, which is called a Chinese bamboo. It takes five years, five years after you plant the seed of this Chinese bamboo for it to break ground. Now, this Chinese bamboo seed, when you plant it, every day you have to water it, you have to add fertilizer to it, you have to nurture it, you have to pamper it. And for five years, every day you have to do this. If you don't do it for two to three days, it, the seed dies and it doesn't sprout. It doesn't germinate, it doesn't break ground. And you don't see anything whilst you are catering for this seed in the ground for five years. But after five years, the Chinese bamboo, the Chinese bamboo seed breaks ground and within six weeks grows up to 90 feet. So for five years, nothing happens. Yet you have to constantly water, a fertilizer, pump out that little ground that a seed is in, and you see nothing for five years. But when it sprouts, breaks ground, within six weeks, that is a month and two weeks, it grows 90 feet. So basically, you can actually watch it growing. Okay? Growing. Now, the last one is, as a business, we use the services of Amazon Web Services. And when I was preparing for today's session and I was looking for a company that has been consistent in their service delivery, their customer experience, I couldn't think of any other company but Amazon. Anytime that I contacted Amazon for support, they always went beyond what they ought to do. They always wowed me with their support and feedback and support. To the point where when people tell me, oh, you know what, you can use Microsoft Azure, you can use Google Cloud and all of that. I, I'm not even interested. Now, what do these three stories have in common? At the core of these three stories is love, is consistency, is inconsistency, and patience. We all say we love, we love, we love, but we are inconsistent in the way we deliver our love. We are inconsistent in the way we deliver our love. So when you take the story of Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Mrs. Smith was patient, she was loving. Mr. Smith loved, but was inconsistent. That was inconsistent. If you take the story of Amazon, they constantly ensure that they are giving their customers their very best. And they do that through the love that the employees have for their business and their customers. Now, when we take the story of the Chinese bamboo, it takes five years of pampering and nurturing without any results. How many of us can be that patient in our dealings for an ultimate result such as that of the Chinese bamboo. So today, we're talking about love, patience, tolerance, understanding, and not giving up. What is the definition of inconsistency? Lacking in consistency, agreement, or compatibility, and variance. Okay? And as I always do, I give some quotes. So the first one, Inconsistency is the only thing in which men are consistent. Inconsistency is the only thing in which men are consistent. Charlie, this one is not good for the men. 
So it means that men, the only thing they can be consistent with is inconsistency. They can't do anything according to what is expected. This is by Horace Smith. The second one reads, mankind is made up of inconsistencies and no man acts invariably up to his predominant character. The wisest man sometimes acts weakly and the weakest sometimes wisely. So basically what this is saying is that in our DNA and makeup is inconsistency in the way we deal, for which is the natural part of us. This is by Lord Chesterfield. The third one reads, man prays for mercy, but is unwilling to extend it to others. Why then should man expect mercy from God? It is unfair to expect something that you are not willing to give. I take it again. Man prays for mercy, but is unwilling to extend it to others. Why then should man expect mercy from God? It is unfair to expect something that you are not willing to give, Isaac Singer. So here we as a people, people of faith, we are constantly praying to our God for forgiveness of our sins. Constantly. Constantly and consistently. And we are hoping and believing that a good, loving God is going to forgive us. Yet we are not willing to forgive our own brothers and sisters. That's hypocrisy. So if you're watching and you've got beef with somebody or somebody's trying to make up to you, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. The last one, call when you say you will. Show up when you say you will. Deliver what you say you will. Inconsistency destroys trust. And trust is the foundation of all relationships. Paul Carrick Brunson. I'll take it again. Call when you say you will. Show up when you say you will. Deliver what you say you will. Inconsistency destroys trust. And trust is the foundation of all relationships. A lot of times we promise, we say things, but we don't deliver. So you tell somebody, I love you, but you don't show up. You tell somebody, I love you, but you don't call when you said you will call. At the call of relationships lies consistency. So if we are not consistent with the things we say, we promise, how can there be trust and how can we have the best relationships? So here are some tips for how to be consistently consistent. Okay? So some tips on how to be consistently consistent. So the first one is have a consistent morning. So have your morning routine. You wake up, you probably brush your teeth, whatever. Have your morning devotion, read a book, and do whatever, yeah? So have that morning ritual, but do it consistently. So it sets, it, it, it sets the stage. It sets the tone for what your day is going to be like. So we are talking about learning to be consistent with stuff that we do. So your, your morning, you can have your morning rituals, but do it consistently, okay? The second one is write it down, okay? Write it down to focus, F-O-C-U-S. Focus on one course until, you know, you're successful, okay? So whatever you want to do, you write it down and you focus on it, you zoom in on it, and you keep working at it, okay? When you keep doing that, as I've always said, the more you do something, the more your habits begin to form, the more it becomes easier to do, okay? The third one is ask yourself, what's the best thing you can do right now? At any moment, ask yourself, what is the best thing you can do? What is the best thing you can do with your time? Remember, I've always talked about being conscious. Being conscious. Yeah, a lot of times we live, we go through life without being conscious of how we feel, what we think, what others are thinking, what they are feeling. We just bulldoze through life and we miss a lot of beautiful moments and things like that. Okay? The fourth one, consistent thinking. As I've always said, I have discovered and realized that my life is today more meaningful than all my previous lives. Yes, because I decided to figure out what my purpose on life is. And I've also realized that the more I'm conscious 
of the things that matter, and I'm constantly thinking about it, I've found an inner calm, an inner joy, and I worry less of so many things that I used to worry about. I find myself loving in ways that I normally would not. I find myself accepting to be vulnerable, normally in ways that I wouldn't have. But all of this is possible because I'm consistently thinking about how do I become a better person. Even when somebody says, hey, they don't want to be friends with you anymore, they don't want to be super cool with me anymore, I still find within myself to still love them regardless. Because guess what? I have put myself in their shoes and I've tried to understand where they're coming from. But this is possible only because I'm consistently thinking about how to become a better person, a better lover, a better friend, a better boss, and all of that. A better father, a better, you know, name it. But you have to, what, be consistently thinking about it. How do you become a better person in whatever sphere of your life, you know, you find yourself. And then through that, be consistent with your behaviors. I'm going to call, you call. I'm going to show up, you show up. Yeah? Be consistent. But if there are times for which you are challenged, you cannot. Let it be known. Let it be known. Say, hey, I'm sorry, I'm running late. Sorry, I can't make it. Something made came up, but I'm going to make it up. But not only do you say it, but put in the effort. It's not about words. It's about deeds. Okay? Don't let self-doubt creep in. I've always said, a lot of times, fear stops us. Doubt about, am I, am I beautiful enough? Am I competent enough? Am I qualified enough? And all of that. The good Lord made us in his own image. We have all that it takes. So stop, stop, stop allowing self-doubt to cripple you from living your best lives. It starts with what? The consciousness. Talking to yourself, listening, and investing in yourself through which you become confident, through which you are able to put one step in front of the other. Okay? Do it even if you don't feel like it. Dress up when you don't even feel like it. Go. Take that initiative. Make that first step. And keep going. No matter how you feel, keep going. If you are in the benefit mindset, whereby you are looking at developing yourself, not just for yourself, but for the good of society and mankind, you will find the strength to put your foot, one foot in front of the other. And then when they are tired, there are going to be times when you are tired and you are beat. Take time off. Take time off. It's, time. it's okay to take a vacation. It's okay to take a break. It's okay to chill and relax. You're only human. But don't forget that don't be in that state for long. Regroup and come back stronger. Build willpower. I talk about being a liar and the pussycat and the eagle and all of that. Build willpower. Build that ability to be able to self-motivate. When you have a purpose that is so huge and humongous, a purpose that keeps you up at night, a purpose that drives you to be the best you can be, through that process, you will surely find that willpower that you need. It will start growing within you. It may take five years, just like the Chinese bamboo. But when it sprouts, it breaks ground. Trust me, it's beautiful. And that is where I want us all to be. On Saturday, I went for my run in support of Run for a Cure, the cancer 5K virtual walk race. I had slept for two and a half hours that Saturday. I set my alarm clock for 5.30. I could have made so many excuses why I didn't have to go. I had registered, I had paid my you know, my registration fee. But I woke up and went for the walk. Prior to this, I've always heard and known of Run For A Cure and other similar courses. A lot of times as a business, you get sponsorship requests and things like that. And I'll just sign off and we participate. But I never really took time to try to understand what the value was what the, the movement, the effort was. But because now I am conscious in thinking about all the things that I do, the things that matter, I took time to try and understand why do I have to get involved and run for a cure? When I thought of my friend who has been a survivor, who is a survivor of cancer, when I saw pictures 
of breast with cancer. You don't want to see those pictures. And when I think of my female besties, people who have stood by me, supported me, loved me unconditionally, when I look at my own daughter, I look at my own mother, and I look at all the women out there, there was no excuse that could be bigger than going out there to support such a cause. But not only did I go, but I was amazed by the number of other people that also registered from London, Italy, Canada, and locally registered, got their t-shirts, and actually worked as well. They did all of this in support of TMC and also for the bigger cause of supporting such a noble cause. Now, when you find yourself at this juncture of one's life where you find meaning to what one's purpose is and the relevance of living your life on your terms, that is when life really starts. So as you're listening, you're listening. I want you to keep loving consistently because with that consistency, we don't build trust. We are open for the daggers and all the things that the devil may throw at us. Find rituals in your relationships that will allow you to be carrying each other as Mr. and Mrs. Smith had done. But when you fall, accept it, pray for forgiveness, apologize where you have to, and genuinely make effort to be a better human being. We are all infallible. We are all imperfect. But let's love those around us with their imperfections. With their imperfections. Where you work, don't just be an average mediocre employee. Love your company. Love your fellow employees. Love your bosses. But most importantly, love your customers and give them the very best. And don't make excuses. Give them the very best. In all the things you do, if it's a church, love with all that you have. Because love is the only rational act. My brothers and sisters, when you discover the beauty of love and its consistency, the beauty of forgiveness, and the beauty of being the best you, trust me, trust me. When you have nothing, he will still find fulfillment and joy. When it was all said and done, Mr. Smith said, it's not about the material things, the big houses, the cars, the big bank accounts, and all of that. Those things create an environment conducive for happiness. But it's not happiness in itself. But happiness in itself, it's how we treat each other. So if you're listening, please, love unconditionally, and let's strive to be the best we can be. I love you guys. Thank you so much for another evening. Take care and keep safe.